Well, praise God. Good to be with you again this week as we continue our walk through the Word. We're going to finish up the book of Galatians today. So get out your uh, Bible, open up to Galatians chapter 6, and uh, get out a pen and paper if you want to take some notes. God is good. Amen. Amen. God is good. No matter what you're going through, God has your back. God has your best interest in mind. He loves you. So don't ever feel that you're alone, even if you have no family members, no friends to support you. The creator of the universe, the one who created it all, loves you, cares for you, and he has your back. Amen. Well, let's pray before we get started. Lord, I just thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I ask that you uh, just uh, just anoint me to speak and teach what you want to be spoken and anoint those that are listening, either by choice or by accident, anoint them to receive a rhema word, a right now word that will speak to their lives. And I ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Open up your Bibles to first or Galatians 6. There's only one Galatians. Galatians 6. And we're going to look at chapter 4 or verse 14. Now, this is the Apostle Paul speaking by unction of the Holy Ghost. But God forbid that I should glory save in my denomination. No, it doesn't say that. Save in my works. No. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Let's focus on that. But God forbid, forbid that I should glory, save in the cross, or you could say it this way, in anything but the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that you and I have as a believer, our salvation, all the benefits that come through our salvation, including healing, including the baptism in the Holy Ghost, including prosperity, including peace, including supernatural joy, on and on and on it goes. All the benefits that come to you and I are a result of what Jesus did at the cross. You cannot preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without preaching the cross. A gospel without the cross is not the gospel. I'm going to say that again. A gospel without the cross is not the gospel. Now think on that. I am sad to say, and I know because I keep up and... Uh, there are churches across this land that have forsaken the cross of Jesus Christ. The Bible calls them enemies of the cross. You can't get people saved without preaching the cross. You cannot get people baptized in the Holy Ghost without preaching the cross because it all starts at the cross. What Jesus Christ paid for with his shed blood at the cross. Amen. Thank God for the cross. Turn to 1 Corinthians. To your left just a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. Now think about what the Apostle Paul said 2,000 years ago. And how relevant it is to today, to the church today. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. You know, I've told this story many times and it's worth repeating because it's indicated indicative of what's going on in the church world as a large today, at large today. 
I once attended the biggest church in the United States, was baptized in the Holy Ghost at this church. My life was radically changed under the ministry of the founding pastor of this church. Then he passed, he went on to heaven, and his son took over the ministry. Now his son began to preach a different gospel. It was not the gospel that was preached before in that church. No longer was the blood talked about. No longer was the cross talked about. No longer was sin talked about. No longer was the baptism in the Holy Ghost talked about. No longer were the gifts of the Spirit spoken of. So I began to have concerns. And I wrote a letter. And I laid out what I just said. These things aren't being preached anymore. What's happening here? You know, no. Nope. There's no mention of the cross of Christ whatsoever. Well, I was called to a meeting with the pastor who was the son of the founding pastor. I was called to a meeting with his brother. His brother sat me down in his office, and it was nice of him to invite me up there and speak to me person to person, representing his brother. And he looked at me and said, Mace, my brother preaches a message of hope, and you cannot... Listen to that. You cannot preach a message of hope and preach the cross at the same time. Think on that. Well, I left that meeting, and after hearing that statement, I never went back. I never went back. Why? Because the Holy Spirit brought me to this. For the preaching of the cross is foolishness, to those that perish, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Friend, you cannot have power without the cross. You will not have salvation without the cross. You cannot set captives free without the cross. You cannot get people healed without the cross. You cannot change lives without the cross. For in the cross is the power of God. So preacher, if you're preaching anything but the cross, you're not preaching the gospel. If you, if you think you can pity pat around the cross, you need to not be preaching. Amen? Go down to verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Verse 23. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking by unction of the Holy Ghost. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. To religion the cross is foolishness. To a dying world the cross is foolishness. How does a man hanging on a, on a wooden beam save anybody, change anybody's life? I tell you how, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, who was sinless in totality in his earth walk, went to the cross to pay the penalty for sighing, dying, crying humanity. He sacrificed his life for mankind so you and I could be saved so we could be bought back from the devil. And that happened at the cross. Amen. At the cross, at the cross, I surely saw the light. Amen. Don't ever denigrate the cross. Thank God for the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, friend, I love you. God bless you. Uh, go to church this week. Say your prayers. Spend time with the Lord every day. Spend time in reading the word every day. And know this, if I don't see you around town, I'll see you.